Welcome to Hillboro, everybody. And we're in the city of St. Anthony, my hometown. And today is actually Pioneer Day weekend. The weekend that this town and many others in Idaho and Utah celebrate of the historic legacy of our ancestors coming across the plains and settling this area. For those of you who may be familiar with St. Anthony coming off Highway 20 and entering into the city or the town, this is the spot where the tank that greets you normally would be. A lot of people don't know, but that tank that normally sits here still runs. And because it still runs, and we happen to have that spe specific tank operator in this area, they run it through the parade. It still works. Normally, we travel, we ride from St. Anthony to some other town, and we give a little bit of history lessons. Because we're from St. Anthony, we don't have to ride very far, but just down the road. But it was kind of known as the bootlegging town of Southeast Idaho. So back during the time of Prohibition, St. Anthony was the place to be. There's actually tunnels underneath the city of St. Anthony, like miles of tunnels that connect uh, the courthouse, the hospital, the post office, the, uh, the hotels, of course, and the bars and those uh, tunnels would connect each other and just play a big part in the bootlegging of alcohol. And uh, because of that, this town had the re has had the reputation for the longest time of being rough, especially in a M Mormon community with Rexburg just down the road. So today we are going to share a little bit of uh, the history of St. Anthony, as well as celebrate the Pioneer Day celebration because St. Anthony puts on the best Pioneer Day celebration in the area. And so I hope you guys enjoy this video. We're going to attend the parade. We're going to go to the car show later today as well as the rodeo. It brings in quite a crowd. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's uh, enjoy Pioneer Day here in St. Anthony. So one of the cool things they do here at the St. Anthony uh, Pioneer Day Parades is in the morning, the local community uh, contributes to a bake sale. And so locals will uh, bake a lot of goods like pies, as well as uh, breads and cookies. So this bake sale is really popular. A lot of the community and a lot of the locals will donate to the baked goods. You can come in, purchase a lot of the homemade baked goods, and the proceeds go back into Pioneer Days funding the parade, funding the rodeo. And so one of the fun things that they do at Pioneer Days Parade, and if you didn't know that, you gotta get here early in the morning in order to get anything because that will all sell out and it will sell out fast. <laughs> Of course, what's a good uh, community event without a good morning 5K and 10K? So in the morning, there's the option for everyone to participate in a 5K and a 10K run around town through the Greenbelt, around the schools, around the neighborhoods, and then back. And uh, there was a lot of participation this year. It's always good to see everyone come together and do a good morning uh, 5K, 10K run. So I'm standing in the staging area, the parking lot where all the floats come together uh, for the Pioneer Day Parade. This parking lot will fill up with the campaigning floats, the commercial floats, 
uh, a lot of the classic cars, a lot of the uh, just fun things uh, that are in a parade. But the highlight of the parade has to be the real Festiva type floats, which are all right here along this side. Not a lot of people know this, but uh, the real festive type floats are usually put on by uh, the church communities in this area. In the LDS uh, church, they separate the congregations into sections of the community called wards. And each ward is in charge of their own float. And they are, uh, they compete as far as uh, which one has the best uh, float in moving parts and meeting the theme. This year's theme is the Worldwide Wonders. So whoever uh, fits the theme the best, as well as has a real functioning float with moving parts and just real good uh, attention to detail on the floats, will win a little bit of extra cash to go towards uh, their float next year. The other fun fact about these floats is uh, these wards or these church communities that put these floats together, uh, this isn't uh, something they're hired to do at all. This is actually a calling in the ward uh, to be over the float for Pioneer Day Parade. Last year, my wife and I were actually called to be in charge of the float. It's a lot of work and a lot of people don't understand how much work is just donated in putting these floats together, as well as putting this whole event together in St. Anthony. It's a calling to be in charge of the parade itself. And then at the end of the day, uh, they'll do a rodeo. And it's actually, there's a lot of volunteer calling work for organizing the parking lot and just keeping things to go in together. So I'm really appreciative to uh, the city of St. Anthony, the community, the businesses, as well as the church uh, communities and congregations in making this event as epic as it is, because this is one of the coolest Pioneer Day celebrations uh, anywhere around the world. You forget how big this thing actually is until you stand right next to it. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> this particular tank uh, didn't really see any action. Obviously, most of the monument tanks haven't. Uh, this one came out of California. May have had some time in Germany, not 100% sure. So in order to operate this tank, you have to have a certified uh, operator and technician. And we actually have one of those in the city of St. Anthony. But he actually looks over this tank and keeps it running. Also part of the main reason why we're able to use that in the Pioneer Day Parade.
What'd you guys think of that parade? That was cool. That the, was the fun. first place one was really cool. What was your favorite float? Ours. Ours. The under the sea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one was pretty good. Is that second place? Yeah, ours was second place. Do you need one? Our little hooker murder. Uh, I had to hold him a lot. You didn't like it. At the beginning, you didn't, didn't like the noise noise. cars. Didn't hey, like what did you do for the parade? Herkimer. Hey. I think the family had a good time at the parade. Today is uh, not nearly as hot as it's been for the past couple weeks. It is kind of overcast. I think it's due to a lot of smoke coming out of Nevada and California, uh, but it's also helped just keep the temperature down and make the day quite enjoyable, actually. I found a high chew. Yummy. It's Ooh, mango. mango is my favorite. You guys ready to go check out the car show? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Guess what the first vehicle is when you walk in? A Bronco. That orange first gen Bronco. You never see these at the car shows and we've seen two of them, Broncos, but not just any Bronco. I used to have an 85, which would have been a Gen 3 full size, that we would take to this car show. It was almost in this kind of condition, very close. Uh, it was red and white, but it is extremely rare that you see a uh, 78, 79 second generation in this condition. And so that thing definitely has my vote for today.
Sounded like a lot of fun. Good luck, Riker. Well, that was an awesome end to a great Pioneer Day weekend celebration. The rodeo is always a good end, always full of great fun. Billy, what's your favorite part at the rodeo? rodeo? I like the barrel racing. The barrel racing, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Riker, what do you like? I like um, team roping and roping. Callie? I like the barrel racing. Barrel racing. Well, I'd also have to say I like the bulls and I think someone got hurt tonight. Hopefully he's okay. But we'd like to express our gratitude for those who had sacrificed so much before us um, in this Pioneer Day celebration. The pioneers who, uh, many of them even sacrificed their own lives, but left everything they had. Many of them searching for a new life, uh, gold rushes, others escaping persecution. Nonetheless, many of those before us have settled this area and made it such a wonderful place for all of us to live, to travel to, to recreate, to raise families. It's a great blessing for all of us, especially the, uh, my little family. Well, not my little family. Half of us are gone. <laughs> Walker couldn't hold up to the night rain and the wind and so mommy and Summer had to take him home. So if any of you guys are ever at the St. Anthony Sand Dunes or in the area at the end of July around the Pioneer Day celebration weekend, don't forget that it's a short drive from the St. Anthony Sand Dunes or uh, anywhere close and you can come here and enjoy one of the most iconic Pioneer Day celebrations here in St. Anthony. One of the best parades in the area, as well as a really fun car show, and also one of the best rodeos. What about the play, Dad? Oh yeah, so that's another thing that I forgot to tell you guys about, is all week before the Pioneer Day celebration, uh, the community puts on a play. And this, I didn't go to the play because I helped watch Walker while the rest of the family went. What was the play this year? Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof. And they do an awesome good job. And they do it, they hold it at the high school. And so yeah, don't forget the play as well, all week. Someone told me that Jocelyn's loaf of bread we took to the bake sale, uh, sourdough loaf of bread. I dropped it on the table and as I was walking out, I saw someone buy it. I tell you that bake sale, Everything in that room goes fast. Well, we're excited to get back out on the trail and explore Idaho again on the side-by-sides and four-wheelers. But I think it's time to head back home and call it a night. So thank you everybody for watching Hillbro and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. See ya.